Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tony Needs Hobbies. The guy you see cycling here is me, Tony, and I forgot to record an intro to this video so I decided to do it this way. In this video I will be making mead, and not any kind of mead but wild fermented elderflower mead. That means it has no yeast added but all the yeast for fermenting came from the ingredients used, like the elderflowers that I'm picking here. And with the elderflowers picked, I am heading back home to work on the honey. For this batch of wild fermented mead, I'm going to use raw wildflower honey. This hasn't been treated or heated so all the yeast collected by the bees from the flower petals is still intact and that is important if you want to wild ferment it. The honey I got fully crystallized out so it's a bit more work to get it into this white mouth carboy. Since it doesn't pour I had to scoop the 1650 grams of honey from bucket to carboy. Then it is important to get all the honey into solution. I added 3 liters of water and stirred it until it was all dissolved. I'll make sure to put the full recipe on my website www.tonyneedshobbies.com and will place a link in the description for your reference. I am using 3 natural sources of yeast for the fermentation, the honey, the elderflowers and ginger bug. Ginger bug is a concoction of grated ginger and sugar that comes alive after a few days of feeding and stirring. I have a short video on how to make it and will link it in the top right corner of the screen. I add about a cup of it to the honey water mixture. I also add raisins as a yeast nutrient. There is a lot of online discussion on whether this is useful or not. I don't know the answer and have no negative experience from using raisins in mead, so I just added a handful. Then the last ingredient which I have been picking this morning, the elderflowers. I will add a large bunch. That doesn't sound very scientific, does it? I decided not to care too much about that since it is an uncontrolled fermentation anyway. But do make sure that the flowers smell fresh and are bug free. I gave the mixture a good stir, topped it up with water to 5 liters and covered it with a muslin cloth. Some of the inspiration for this wild fermenting mead I got from this book Make Mead Like a Viking by Jeremy Zimmerman. The book explains that you should stir the mead as often as possible in the early stages of fermentation for all kinds of reasons, so that's what I'm going to do next. For a week I have stirred the mixture vigorously every day for a couple of minutes. After every stirring session, I covered the carboy with muslin and placed it outside in a shady part of our backyard. Since it is spring, there is a lot going on outside yeast-wise, and part of wild fermenting fun is trying to catch some of those airborne yeast cells to add to the mix. It all worked out. After a week the fermentation is going strong as indicated by the bubbles rising. I repeated the daily stirring session for another week and then it was time to transfer the fermenting mead from the white mouth carboy into a regular one that I can fit with an airlock. Since it is now sealed off, there is no point in storing it outside anymore, so I kept it in a dark and cool place in the house. When the airlock didn't bubble anymore, I started regularly transferring the mead into another carboy, which is called racking, to get the clearest result.
after 9 months it was time to check the final gravity and have a little taste to see if the batch was ready to be bottled. I siphoned it once more into a clean carboy and took a little sample to taste. Oh wow, this meat is awesome. It's relatively sweet and very floral and I absolutely love it. Since it's a little bit on the sweeter side of things, there will be some residual sugars left. So before bottling, I might need to stabilize it. And to decide on that, let's check the final gravity. The gravity reads 1.020, which is indeed a bit high. Wild yeast generally doesn't reach very high alcohol percentages, so I think this final gravity is just what it will be. To make sure I don't get exploding bottles, I have to stabilize this batch before bottling. It's super easy, but does add one day to the process. As I did with all the materials used during this project, I sanitized another carboy with star sand. Into this one I will add the stabilizer agents and add the meat to let it sit for a day. Stabilization is done with potassium sorbate and sulfite in equal amounts by weight. The label on the packages advise 0.5 grams of each, in this case of a 5 liter batch. I dissolve it in the tiniest amount of water before adding it into the carboy, and then siphon the mead into the carboy as well. A little meat is lost in the siphoning process, so I add a little bit of spare meat made in the same way that I had sitting in a flask. The sorbate and sulfite have to do their work for 24 hours, after which I can go straight into bottling. And for bottling I will be using swing top bottles for the first time. The clear glass ones I got will look great once filled with mead and it is very easy to reuse these bottles as well. So I invested in a good amount of them. The bottles were already clean but I did sanitize them as well as the swing top caps in a star sand solution. Then I transferred the mead from my bottling bucket into the freshly cleaned bottles and closed the tops. I am really looking forward to taste this awesome wild fermented elderflower mead in a few months to find out how it developed. To remind me what's inside these bottles, I wrote the contents on a label and stuck one to each bottle to finish this project off. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. I made myself a nice batch of wild fermented meat and I learned a lot in the process. I hope you learned a little bit as well. It's spring again, so get out there, find yourself some elderflower, get some honey and give it a go. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you did then let me know by hitting that like button. And please also consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. That's it for now, I would like to thank you for watching, bye bye.